folks. Welcome in Seven Rivers Racing and KQE GTV. I'm Dan Dyker as we are in that lull time of the racing period with track championships have wrapped up and everybody's waiting for big events to go on at the Rockford Speedway, Lacrosse Speedway, and some other areas as the racing winds down here for the last month. Though we would start the program and congratulating and updating you on some of the other tracks in the area and exactly where they are as we head into Oktoberfest race weekend. Uh, Mississippi Thunder Speedway uh, had their big B, uh, Bayman B Mod $10,000 challenge a couple weeks ago. They wrap up their fifth season under the helm of Bob Tim. Uh, coming up here with a whole lot of racing October 4th and 5th. I want to congratulate and uh, wish you good luck to those drivers. Slinging some dirt up at MTS this year. Tundra Series, Brad Mueller won the 75 lap season finale last weekend. That was at the Slinger Speedway. Nick uh, Panitsky is the 2013 Tundra champion. Yeah, that was his first year behind the wheel of a super late model. Paige Decker edged out Matt Piper to claim Rookie of the Year honors. You'll see both of them at Oktoberfest in lacrosse. At the Dells, Rich Schumann won the 50-lap feature event last weekend at Dells Raceway Park, and uh, that brought a bunch of champions about. Uh, Jerry Jungett, victorious in Sportsman feature. Gary Stark won the band of feature. Jeff Burroughs won the Pure Stock A-Main. Nick Nolden is the Dells late model champion of this year. A team of Dave Trout and uh, Mitch Leiden, the sportsman champions. Travis Hancock, champ in the Pierce Stock. Steve Rosick is the bandit champ. And Andrew Portsman was the bandit challenge champion. He went undefeated on the year. Rookies of the year went to late models. Kelsey Schultz, sportsman Spencer Wilhelm, and the bandits Dave Trout Jr. 20th and 21st of September. They've got a big showdown race going on at the Dells. We had a big showdown and flames and all kinds of monotony at the lacrosse speedway last weekend. We're going to jump right into the recap of Eve of Destruction. What a huge crowd we had, even to open up some ends of the racetrack that we normally don't for that night to get everybody in. And uh, what a fantastic time we had up there. We're going to start things off showing you the four jet cars that Steve Seldner out of uh, Illinois brought in. We had the uh, jet outhouse. You can see right here, I was trying to interview the guy. Said, hey, I got to go to the bathroom real bad. We thought, okay. And then all of a sudden, he takes off. First time I've ever seen a jet-powered outhouse uh, anywhere, primarily at the lacrosse speedway. What a great job he did. Then later on the night, Snoopy, he adorned himself with a costume in a jet-powered doghouse, which was kind of interesting as well. That led into the finale of the night, which we're going to show you now instead of later on in the program. Uh, we always have Doug Rose, the Green Mama jet car, come out. He comes out of Florida, burns up a couple of cars uh, during the end of the races. This time, we had a 42,000-horsepower school bus. There you see on your left, that was Mr. Seldner, who drove the doghouse and the outhouse, and then uh, Doug Rose and the Green Mama jet car. Now, Doug started things off flaming up just one car, melting it down, as the 42,000-horsepower school bus to the left had a pickup truck with a car in the cab. And as you're going to see here, as you see the smoke and fired up the, the, uh, the headlights, that was felt in about a 50 mile radius. There was so much heat out there, uh, it wasn't even funny. So again, Rose is on the right, Seldner the school bus was on the left, and uh, that thing was flaming about at least 45 minutes until even after the uh, EVA destruction was done with. So I wanna thank both of those gentlemen coming up. That was, uh, that was really cool at the Speedway Saturday night. Uh, gonna also go to some of the other events we have going on. Late model driver Cole Schulze, Strapped himself into a car, and you're just, we're going to watch right here. He was a part of the steel wall crash, and as he hit speeds of about 50 mile an hour, blew everything up around the car, but he did some substantial damage to the front end of that car, as you see it again from a different angle. And uh, we were hoping to get that thing flipped around, but man, Cole shows he said he wanted to do it again. He crawled out of that car uh, with a, a huge smile. One of the other uh, demolition events we had, uh, Josh uh, or uh, John Clausen in the flying minivan leap. And you're gonna see him take off from the opposite way of the speedway, loses the tire, pushes each one of those into a wall. Now this was a whole lot faster than that video actually showed as he ended up rolling it over. Not sure why he kept the windshield wipers on. Nice job of not pummeling the windshield. And then I'm standing just beyond the wall right here. You can see me in the red shirt as wall. And then he just happened to flip over John Klaus and the K9 Hornet driver. Uh, crawled out uh, after doing a great job. Big uh, finale on the night, the 19 entries into the trailer race of destruction. This, I saw the comments people were putting out this week as we show you some video here. 
one of the best that people had seen in a long time. These trailers that they come out with were outstanding. The ACDC, you had one that was about 40 feet long that eventually got stuck up into uh, uh, turn one. What a night just for the smashing and the crashing that went on. Our winner was uh, one of our Thunderstock drivers, Jordan Myers, who actually had a couple of good nights here. Myers took home the Trailer Race of Destruction uh, Championship, and we're going to show you in a moment, uh, he won himself another crown. As, look at that track, littered full of stuff and dust, smoke. Uh, this was just uh, a really, really cool one to see. Felt bad for some competitors, though, that got stuck in the infield and really had no place to go once their back wheels dug down into the mud. And uh, 19 entries, and after it was all said and done, maybe five or six got their vehicles, still remained to the starting point, not sure. A couple of them on the front straightaway uh, were just dying. I remember uh, Clausen and David Cavan were hooked together and didn't have anywhere to go. But uh, what a great time. I want to thank all those uh, entries for coming out and putting on a great show for everybody. Uh, David Cavan did uh, dominate. He took the rollover competition with 11 points this year. And uh, we went into the destruction in between the smashing here and there. We had the Hornets on the action track quarter mile, which we're going to show you the first of two features. A lot of cars came out uh, Saturday night, and the points chases are just huge still. The first feature started with uh, three wide leaders. That would have been Josh Viner, Charlie Cook, and Jared Carey battling for the lead. At the end, after some spins right here, the wind went, uh, the wind went to right there. Platinum Charlie Cook in the number 11 car. And uh, that was uh, a nice feature for him to, to take off on. Feature number two went to a very familiar driver. He comes out of Toma, the more for less auto.com. Number 90, I told him at the beginning of the year this car was going to do some things just because of the way it was painted this year. Uh, we're going to show you Matt Moore just dominating the field here. This was a patience game as he tried to get around Jake Chalmers, waited for about three laps. As you see here, he finally goes to the inside port of the track. The Hocus Pocus Focus did its thing, and Matt Moore ended up his night into the uh, victory lane, and uh, I'm bound to say he had at least four feature wins this year. Would have been in the chase if he just stayed at the track pretty much for the entire season. Uh, the division now enters Oktoberfest race weekend. Jake Bemis has a one-point lead over Kevin Turner, seven-point lead over Kim Strom, and there are about three or four of the drivers that are still on the outside looking to get in. Matt Carpenter, Hunter Miller, Matt Moore picked up a heat race wins, and just before the break, we have the figure eight race, final one of the regular season, and out of all the entries we had, Jordan Myers ended up winning the feature eight race as well. We're going to remind you, we added one race, the Oktoberfest uh, enduro is going to be the weekend of October 12th. Check out Lacrosse Speedway, 100 lap enduro for four cylinder and V6. Look on the driver's links on the website and you'll be able to find the entry form, uh, the uh, what it is to get in, how much the payouts are. Again, so our 300 foot bracket national street drag is Saturday, October 12th. Right after that is done, we're going to throw another enduro your way at the Lacrosse Speedway. As we get you set for Oktoberfest race weekend, we did a great show earlier this year that we've showed uh, once or twice, and uh, we thought we would do it again as we get ready for Oktoberfest here the next couple of weeks. And uh, big uh, in remembrance, part of the program today for Mr. Dick Trickle. Not going to be at Fest this year, obviously, but uh, we want his memory to remain alive as we show you what we did earlier this year and get you ready for Oktoberfest. This is Simple Rivers Racing on KQED TV. When you're all out of good ideas and you've moved on to the dumb ones, it's time. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, a higher standard of comfort. Hmm. May I take your order? You're not defeated by indecision. Choose the path that leads to a better day. Choose the way of the meal. Make it a meal with one of Cousin Sub's new pork subs, the Memphis Steak or the Cubano for a limited time only. The key to happiness is sharing. Oh. Cousin Sub's, better bread, better subs, better day. 
Did you know that the Home and American Legion is open to the public? That's right. Seven days a week, you can enjoy the full-service bar while watching your favorite sports team or NASCAR driver. You don't need to be a member to enjoy the Home and American Legion's rotating lunch special every Tuesday for only $6. A banquet hall with seating up to 250 people is also available for weddings, birthdays, or any other special event. See you at the Home and American Legion, 419 First Avenue West in Holman. Get ready for the Thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Racing starts at 7. Super Stocks. Modified. 600 Mods. Pure Stocks. Street Stocks. Viva. It's racing excitement, dirt track style. Tickets $12 for adults. $5, 18 and under. $8 for students or our family pack. $25 for two adults and three kids, 18 and under. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the Thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35, just north of Fountain City. 